What's going on, Father Paul? What, are you doing? Hi, man. what is shake? Not much for uh, seven forty-five in the morning here in Melbourne. <laughs> oh, that's about reveille every day over here at the at the uh, wild compound over here, buddy. That's cool, man. That is so good. I just need a coffee to get myself going. I haven't had the chance yet. So yeah. <laughs> once, I, once I finish here, mate, I'll be I going. Have to, I'll have a job over there. Now, speaking of which, I understand that you've got your own coffee brew as well. Tell me about that. No, oh, yes. Well, um, actually, Blasco uh, actually was friends with the gang over at Death Wish Coffee. And then we got into talking about it. And I said, yeah, well, send me over some... Uh, Send me some brews over here, you know, so, something strong that has tastes like there's espresso in it, you know, uh, you know. So the guys sent me over a batch of different, couple different blends, and uh, I the one I chose ended up becoming Valhalla Java Odin Force blend. So there you go. So you know, you drink you drink a cup of this, you can clean your house three times, you know, <laughs> change the oil in your truck, uh. rotate the tires make your bed five times before brunch. So, you know, it's good. I, I really like it. And how are you after the third cup of that? You must be just about buzzing around the universe and doing all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah, we already wrote another box set. Uh, you know, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah, so we just put doing for Wink out. You know, we already have like eight other albums in the can. So there oh, that's you go. cool. That's fantastic. Hey, speaking of which, Doom Crew Inc., is the brand newy, and um, you must be wrapped with the response that you're getting from it. So it's a great album. Yeah, people are getting violently ill, and it's just what we said there was going to be. People wanted to lose weight yeah. and uh, get you know a beach body. Probably now they can it's longer. Without a doubt, you put the record on, you just start dropping pounds. You know what I mean? So it's that you put it on repeat, start losing some more weight because you can't hold you can't hold food down. You just keep throwing up constantly. So it's great. It's wonderful. It's awesome, dude. I love it. It's um, it's great to hear uh, a twin guitar harmony attack too. So, with Dario in the band and with the the guitar sound sort of almost changing a little bit and complementing your style, but to hear twin guitar harmonies, it just takes me back to Maiden, Priest, all the stuff that I grew up listening to with the different sounding guitars. It's one thing to hear harmonies from one guitar player but when you got two completely different sounds different styles it just really adds something more dynamic to it yeah no it was, i mean it's, it's, as far as thanks a lot man i but as far as i'm concerned it's just more of an evolution you know i mean it's just uh it was live during the live shows you know we got to this point where dario's doing you know doing lines with me whether it's like older songs whether it's stillborn suicide messiah things like that or he's doubling solos with me and, and we're doing different things. So it's just, and live doing Fire It Up, we go out in the crowd, take drink orders and, you know, do doing banjos. So it's just, uh, it kind of evolved to where we're at right now. And do you think that'll influence the songwriting moving into the future and the, the next album? Yeah, why not? You know what I mean? You never know. So, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's where we're at now. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you, you never know. It's yeah, it's brilliant. I love the album. It's got a great sound to it. There's some brilliant videos that have been released as well. My favorite's got to be end of days. Just that um, the concept with um, with you guys running around in in koala bear and grizzly bear suits, just going hell bent for leather with each other, is just brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we definitely had a good time making it. That's for sure. Were you, was that you two throughout the entire video, you and JD? What's that? Was that stunt men, or did, were you and JD going at it yourselves throughout the entire video? Oh, we were we were going at it the entire time doing the video, and then after the video, we just continued on without the bear suit and the koala suit. We still carried on even when we went out for break for lunch, and we went out for dinner later on. So it's just business as usual in the um, the black label society. The black label, camp. yes, it is. <laughs> I, I, I particularly love the end bit with the two dudes in the dumpster and, you know, the lids coming down sort of, you know, in tandem. That just added a great touch. That was really funny. It was a good, it was a good time, for sure. Put out of that. Fantastic, man. So No More Tears as well. 30 plus years since No More Tears was released. That's just incredible to me to think that that's been 30 years plus 
since it was released, it's, it still holds up as a brilliant album. How do you feel about it after 30 years? No, without a doubt. I mean, No More Tears is just, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy because every time I, I do hear it on the radio, it's uh, it still sounds great. You know, the between Dwayne and John with the production and then Michael Wagner mixing it, they, you know, it, it really they really knocked it out of the park. It still sounds great. I, you know, whenever I hear it on radio, I'm like, wow, it really sounds good. But uh, no, what I, you know, without a doubt, I remember, you know, I, people ask me what I remember about making a record. It just, we had a great time doing it. You know, and we had a great time making No Rest for the Wicked. I mean, it just kind of carried on yes. into, you know, when we did No More Tears. So, yeah, it was certainly a great progression from, from No More Tears to No More Tears. And it was, just blows me away that you guys are still playing it. And um, I believe, is Ozzy going back out on the road with you again this year to continue that tour? Well, I mean, the game plan is, I guess, 2023, you know, for Oz, you know, if he feels, you know, healthy enough to, to get out there and road after, he, you know, he fell and banged himself up. You know, because when we did the 2019 New Year's Eve show at the Forum, on the Ozfest, you know, Oz was like, after that, he was like, man, we ought to do this every year. You know what I mean? Cause he had, his, he had such a great time. So, and we were having a blast on the tour. So, you know, for Ozzy, he's just, you know, it's, it's, it's what he loves doing. And he's just like, man, it sucks. You know what I mean? Cause he's banged up. It's just, you know, cause it was up to him. He, he we would have never came off the road. You know what I mean? So he was having a blast. Yeah. The timing's just been really awful with, COVID and with um, a lot of other things that have been happening to to not see live tours at the moment is just really uh, it's, it's just a complete pain in the ass I know but you know for you guys as well as for the crowds it just uh, must be really frustrating to sort of think that you're going to get back out on the road and then all of a sudden you've got to put the brakes on again for a while yeah I mean you know we just did did like 50 shows just uh, we did like 44 shows in 50 plus days so we just blitzkrieg through this thing and uh and we had no issues you know not with the with the COVID or anybody getting sick or anything like that so uh no it was a really great time so you know hopefully yeah I mean that's that's what you want you know around the rest of the world so this way obviously the game plan is to go over to Europe and then after that I guess we're going to try and go down to uh you know, get down to Australia, New Zealand, go down to, uh, you know, obviously South America, then obviously Asia, everywhere, you know, around the world. So uh, that's the game plan right now. Yeah. And um, it's a matter of just sort of wait and see how things pan out, but it'd be fantastic to see you back down here. I think the last time I saw you play live was, when you were out here with Aussie going back 97. So that's been ages. So, um, yeah, I know I'm hanging out to see Zach Wilde back playing on Australian stages. That's for sure. For sure. Without a doubt. I mean, we were down there with Oz in what, like 98 or something like that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it was something crazy like that. That was a lot of fun. So, you know, with the No More Tears band and now, you know, hoping to come back down, obviously, with Black Label. Yeah. So I hope we come down there with Ozzy as well, you know. Fantastic, man. So you've done a lot of collabs over the years with different people, and which have just always blown me away how great you sound with working with other musicians. Have you got any plans in the future to work with other people or is there anybody specifically that you haven't worked with that you think you'd like to in the future? Well, I mean, usually those things just, you know, they, I, I usually get asked to do those things, you know what I mean? Which is always fun. I always have a good time doing it, but uh there's people who always ask me, they, you know, it's a funny question. They go, Zach, if you could have a dream band and put a band together, who would it be? I go, I'm already in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, number one, Zach Wild. Uh... I'm playing with the guys I want to play with. You know what I mean? So, you know, between JD, Jeff, and, you know, Dario. So I'm, I'm good. And then when I'm playing with Oz, you know, playing with Tommy, Blasco, and Adam, I mean, I have a blast with the fellas. So I'm blessed in that regard. But, uh, you can't no, you know, I mean, it's just – um. No, you like you said, I mean, doing the guesting thing, that's usually, you know, when I get asked to play on somebody's record, I'll mark it out. It's always a good time. Yeah, it's terrific, mate. But Dario coming into the band, how did that all come about? Because it's it's just amazing to have two complete shredders in the band and particularly for yourself sort of being the, the solo guy for so long. Um, 
I mean, actually, that, that was another Blasco thing as well. Blasco knew about Dario because Dario had yeah. played uh, Janie Lane, Lizzie Borden, and then you know Janie had Dario has his own solo records with Mike Barney on on his uh, Shrapnel records and stuff like that, where it's just instrumental records. Hmm. And uh, you know, Blasco hooked me up with him. I mean, obviously, we know Blasco. I mean, Dario's an amazing player, but then Dario came out to the Vatican. I met him, and I was like, "This is a no brainer," you know. So. Uh, yeah, but Dario's, Dario's been with us now, I think, like almost seven years. So, I mean, he's just, he's an amazing guitarist. He plays piano, he sings, he makes an amazing chicken piccata. You know, he uses, he goes, he uses the capers as opposed to salt. Yeah, he's amazing, bro. Fantastic. Yeah, he's great. The sound is just amazing on this album. Is there, did you take a different approach in the way that you recorded this time around? No, I mean, you know, we, we've been recording records now up at the Vatican since we did Order of the Black. So since 2010, we've been making records at, you know, my home studio. So yeah. no, I, I think I think with every record, though, you, you know, you go in and you, you know, just like you're going into a powerlifting meet. You know, if you bench press 500 pounds, the goal is to bench 505 the next, you know, to beat your previous record, you know, so. I'm saying as far as production wise goes, you want the fidelity, everything bigger. You know what I mean? You know, so you just try to make it sound as great as you possibly can, you know? So uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, it, you know, that's, that's the goal you go in with every record. What about your writing? So when you come up with different riffs, is there a process for writing or do you just sort of, are you driving along in the car and you think about a particular riff and you just sort of, um, you know, hum it into the, the phone or something to keep a record of it. How do you? Yeah, without a doubt, it could be that for sure. You know, I mean, it could be uh, any, you know, when you get inspired, like I always say, you could be hearing something on the radio that definitely triggers off of, you know, you get, it, it brings, you, you get inspired and you want to write something in that vein and then it comes out completely different than what you originally started it out as, you know what I mean? So, uh, that happens a lot. And then or else, you know, it could be the first thing you pick up when you pick up the guitar. You know, yeah, I see you got a guitar in the back with the amp over there. I mean, I'm just saying first thing you pick up and you just start jamming and you come upon a riff. You know, I mean, it's okay. just like, well, how did you end up right now? You're like, oh, I was just sitting there and it came out, you know. Oh, so it's just like the famous story with Randy and Suicide Solution with Ozzy, you know, just tuning up his guitar and ripping out that that opening riff. And it's famous. It's just yeah. Uh, Ozzy was like, "How'd you do that?" You know, like the same thing when we did. I don't want to change the world. I, yeah. I remember I was just writing that riff, down to down to da 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 da, and I remember like in between it, we were talking about, you know, like how to how to, how to pick up women, and so da 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 da. It was like I live at home. I don't have a job, <laughs> and my parents let me sleep in the garage. Da 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 da. You know, I mean, like all these things. It was like, yeah, how you will never get a date and yeah. it was just uh then you'd say something in the mic after we did the riff i remember ozzy came in and it was like what's that riff what use that we're going to use that riff for something you know so it was like kind of it, it was kind of wow just you know what i mean balls. yeah it was pretty nuts that's awesome man well i'm i'm, I'm loving the new album that's brilliant it's um it's such a, a great thing to listen to you get in a really awesome groove when listening to it so yeah, it's really cool. I love it. Um, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, I think it's it's going to do well for you guys. But I would absolutely love to see it down here on tour with you and uh, the rest of the guys. And with any luck, man, fingers crossed, 2022, 23, we'll see you down here at some point. And, um, Without a doubt, man. And uh, I'd love to catch up with you then. And, um, yeah, it'd be really cool. So, man, i got to let you go. Thanks so much for your time, Zach. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's uh Hi, bro. Well, great talking to you, man, and uh, have some more coffee and get on with the rest of the day, my brother. And I'm going to try and hook myself up with some of that. It looks like good stuff. Yeah, without a doubt, brother. Well, you take right. care of yourself, man. Good on you, man. Thanks, Zach. Good talking to you, brother. Thank you, man. Bye, brother.